Technology, Aligarh Muslim University, Professor M.M. M. Sufyan Beg Sahab, my dear colleagues, friends, and online and offline participants. Assalamu alaikum and a very good afternoon to all. Myself, Dr. Sharmin Khan, the chief coordinator of this training program, welcome you all on behalf of our chairman, Dr. Khalid Hassan, who could not join us today because of some engagements. It is so wonderful to see all of you here in spite of the fact that it's a very sunny day. Your presence with us is appreciable. I extend my very hearty welcome to all of you. The idea to conduct this training program on research methodology and innovative statistical applications was need-based, and it was unanimously decided to go ahead with the idea. We are thankful to the Honorable Vice Chancellor for granting us permission to conduct this program. Recently, we have started Masters of Architecture program in this department, and we are also coming up with the Master of Planning program from session 22-23. We have also initiated the process of PhD admissions for the session 21-22. Hence, a training program on research methodology and innovative statistical applications is definitely the need of time. The program is well appreciated by all, as we have witnessed from the list of the participants. We have with us the academicians, professionals, UGPG students, and research scholars from various departments of our university as well as other universities. Listing from departments of ZHCET, Department of Library and Information Science, University Boys Polytechnic, Women's Polytechnic, etc. The list of online participants has crossed all boundaries, and we have registrations from national as well as foreign universities, ranging from School of Architecture, VIT, Tamil Nadu, Sushant University, Haryana, Chitkara University, Punjab, Messi Academy of Architecture, Chennai, Andhra University, Siddha Ganga Institute of Technology, Karnataka, SPA New Delhi, School of Architecture and Design, Galgotia University, UTA Salala Oman, University Technology Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, International Islamic University Malaysia, Manipal Academy of Higher Education Dubai, to name a few. We are fortunate to be blessed with eminent academicians as resource persons for conducting this program. There are professors from various disciplines having expertise in research, and they have obliged us by accept accepting our request to conduct various sessions on different aspects of research like scientific methodology of research, application of search engines, research ethics, data collection, inferential statistics, SPSS, and many more. It is expected that the multidisciplinary resource person's expertise shall be highly beneficial for the participants attending this program. The exposure to exceptional combination of experts from different disciplines is rare, and this program is based on the concept that the basics of research remain same no matter what discipline we belong to. I hope that this shall be the key to the success of this event. With these words, I would once again like to welcome you all in this training program, and I also hope that you will all be benefited by the sessions conducted by our expert resource persons in the week ahead. Wish you all the best, and thank you. I would now like to request Professor M. Altamas Siddiqui Sahab, Dean Faculty of Engineering and Technology, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh, to address the participants. Respected Principal Professor M. M. Sufyan Beg, Chief Coordinator of this event, Dr. Shirmin Khan, Chairpersons of the Department of Studies, staff of this department, students, and other participants. Today we are here to inaugurate 
one week training program on research methodology and innovative statistical analysis organized by the Department of Architecture, Engineering. This is a good initiative towards promotion of research, which will focus on research methodology and statistical analysis. The purpose of a research methodology is to explain the reasoning behind the approach to the research work. This will need to support the collection methods, methods of analysis, and other key points of work. It is just like writing a plan or an outline for what one interests to do. While carrying out research, it can be easy to go off track or depart from the standard methodology. Having a set methodology keeps one accountable and on track with the original aims and objectives and gives a suitable and sound plan to keep the project manageable and in a smooth and effective manner. The research methodology needs to state whether it is planned to use quantitative analysis, qualitative analysis, or mixed method. This will often be determined by what is expected to achieve from the researcher. It, is, it should also be clear in mind that what, is, what this methodological approach is used. Why is this particular methodology the best way to achieve the objects, objectives aimed at? What will be the data collection methods? Because there are varying, there are varying oh, instruments that can be used, such as interviews, physical surveys, questionnaires, actual experiments on some physical setup or machine, etc. The methodology will need to detail the reasoning in choosing a particular instrument for the research to be carried out. Whereas to see what type of measuring instruments and test sections are to be developed for the research. Issues like procurement of the materials and manufacturing process involved are to be sought out and planned well before. What will be the sampling procedure and why? Whether the data will be collected by carrying semi-structured or unstructured interviews? How will one choose the interviews and how will the interviews be conducted? How the data once gathered will be analyzed? What software or computer codes and methods of solution will be adopted? <laughs> Any other practical in limitation in carrying the research is foreseen and how to overcome them. Lastly, it can be publication of the results through patents or research articles. These are certain points one has to keep in mind while planning to start a research. I hope through this teaching program, training program, the participants will learn both theoretically and practically the methods of carrying research I'll advise all of you to be sincere and punctual in attending the training program that has been set by the organizers. In the last, I must congratulate all the members of the architecture department for organizing this event. I wish them all a great success. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. I would now like to request Professor M.M. M. Sufyan Beg Sahab, Principal Zakir Hussain College of Engineering and Technology, Aligarh Muslim University, to address our participants. Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon. Greetings from the Aligarh Muslim University to all the online participants and also to the offline participants who are present here. Dean of the Faculty, Mr. Altamas Siddiqui Sahab, other chairman of the department, fellow faculty members from this department and other sister departments, dear students, research scholars, and participants of this faculty development program. It is definitely a welcome step to have organized this program in the department of architecture. When it comes to research methodology, there is no universal formula that anybody can hand, can hand you out. There is no one size fits all thing in research. It has to be tailor made. Research methodology varies across the disciplines and within a discipline it varies from person to person. So you have to figure out your own specific focused personalized research methodology for yourself. What can be given to you are the general guidelines. 
those general guidelines have to be abided in order to focus down onto the personalized research approach. As far as those general guidelines are concerned, we all know anything which is well begun is half done. So first and the foremost, the problem definition that has to be done in a very careful way. If you choose a very good problem, when I say good, it doesn't necessarily mean easy. It means a challenging problem. If you choose a challenging problem for yourself, I'm sure you can stretch yourself in order to achieve the goals that you have set during the problem that you have chosen. And a good problem will emerge only when you have a good literature survey in place. Wider the literature survey, more shortcomings of the recent work will come in, will dawn on you and you will be able to narrow down onto a challenging problem, right? Never shy away from the challenges in research because this is the time when you have to learn how to do research. It is said that PhD or for that matter, any PG degree is not about doing research. It is about learning how to do research. So this is the learning phase. The way you will be able to adopt and learn the research approaches that is going to last you for the rest of your life. That is going to serve you for all the times to come in which you will have one research problem at hand or the other. So it is very important that you learn properly how to do research. So a wide literature survey leading to a challenging problem, then looking for the solutions that can challenge, that, that can take up that challenging problem is going to help you in a long way. When you are setting up the problem, don't think about the solution. Set the problem first. And when you are looking for the solution, don't look back at the problem definition. That part is over, that part is closed. Never regret that why did I choose a challenging problem for myself. Let me give you an example. Suppose I give somebody the option of crossing a two feet hurdle or a 10 feet hurdle. The human tendency is that let me choose two feet hurdle that should be easy to cross. But then the flip side is if you choose a two feet high hurdle, each and every step will be watched closely. How did you start? What was your rhythm? What was your poise? How did you take off? How did you land? Everything will be watched because the target itself doesn't have any challenging part in it. On the contrary, if you say that I'm going to choose a 10 feet hurdle to cross, nobody will care how did you run, whether you stumble or you didn't. Everybody's focus is on the bar. If you somehow cross it, you will get the applause. Even if there's a case where you're not able to cross cleanly, and you are touching the bar by your uh, two, uh, toe of the, of the feet, even then you'll get clapped because that was a challenging problem that you attempted. So life is all about optimization. You have to choose for a problem that stretches you a little bit, but in the end you are able to solve it. So if you are able to choose a challenging problem, that is something which is, you know, well begun is half done, okay? Look for solutions, produce results, publish those results, improve your research, and that should be a never ending process. It is not the day you end your PhD, your research comes to an end. In fact, from the good universities, when they issue a degree, they say that they are, they are issuing PhD and they are on your degree, they are writing, you are admitted to do research, which means you are qualified to do research today. Till now you were learning, now is the time to actually carry out research. I'll end by quoting a very interesting anecdote that I saw somewhere and people who are doing PhD or who will do PhD or you have, who have done PhD will appreciate. When you study and when you realize that you know everything, they give you the bachelor's degree. If you work further and as soon as you realize that you know nothing, they give you the master's degree. If you work further and when you realize that neither you know anything 
not as anyone else, they give you a PhD. So that is the kind of depth of research that you have to embark on to. So all the best for this faculty development program, all the best for the budding researchers in the domain that you have chosen for themselves to carry out research in, and all the best for all the researchers of this nation to prosper and do wonderful research that can you know, compete with the best of the research in the whole world. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your remarkable words. I would now like to request architect Faraz Farooq Sahab, the coordinator of this program, to deliver a vote of thanks. Uh, respected Dean Sahab, Principal Sahab, Chief Coordinator Sahiba, and all the other uh, dignitaries on the dais present here today. Um, I welcome you here and I take this opportunity and thank you for this opportunity to let me present the vote of thanks. Assalamu alaikum and a very good, uh, good afternoon to all of you. It's my pleasure to deliver this vote of thanks for the inaugural se uh, session of this training program. On behalf of our chairman and the entire department, I'd like to express gratitude to our patron, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Tariq Mansoor Sahab, for granting us the necessary permissions to organize this program. Our Dean, Professor Mohammad Al Tamish Siddiqui Sahab, for gracing the inaugural with his presence. Sir has been very supportive of this program from the very beginning and has facilitated everything to make it possible. Without his counsel and guidance, this program and would, would really not have been possible. The principal of our college, uh, Pro uh, Professor Mirza Mohammad Sufyan Beg Sahab, he's one of the strongest pillars of strength for our department, not uh, just in this, but in every other endeavor that we have undertaken. He's supportive of every productive thing that we do and encouraging in every situation. So we thank you, sir, for being here today. Uh, our chairperson, Dr. Mohammad Khalid Hassan Sahab, who is not here but he is here in spirit and uh, in uh, all kinds of presence. And his help has been uh, inexplicable. It's beyond uh, description and definition. His guidance and patronage has no replacement here. So we thank you, sir. I'd like to thank our chief coordinator for her sheer patience, will and uh, determination, and perseverance as well. Dr. Shamin Khan, thank you so much for bringing this program to our department. We have been working with a team of very hard-working faculty, students, and staff who have been working day and night to make this program a success. A lot of gratitude to you. Lastly, I'd like to thank the participants of this program for registering in such overwhelming numbers. Um, registration, sir, we didn't expect it, so it was a lot. And we sincerely hope that we try to make a lot of effort to make the online and offline experience virtually the same, that there is no difference. So we hope that you will enjoy this and it will be very beneficial for you. Thank you and have a good time of yourself. Thank you. I extend my hearty thanks to dignitaries for gracing the inaugural ceremony. Now it's the time for the tea and the refreshments. I would like to request our dignitaries and participants to move toward the corridor for the high tea. We will resume here at 3.15 to begin our first, very first session of the one-week training program. Thank you.